I can't believe we've already been at Ebisu straight off the plane for almost a week now. I've absolutely had the time of my life. I've loved it here so much. I had the best driving of my entire life as well. And everyone has just been so nice and supportive. Even with the language barrier with some of the locals, you just see everybody working back and forth to understand each other and have a good time. Yesterday was wild. Adam got challenged to a race on the road course to some locals. They had two 350Zs. They did a full on two lap race. It was amazing. And then we brought them over to North Course and gave them some ride alongs. Adam was doing some wicked backies and that was the first time that they ever experienced drifting. So just moments like that have made this trip so incredible. Fausto, Luis, Juliana, the entire Side X team has made this absolutely amazing like I haven't had to worry really about my car at all they're the ones that helped me find this car make sure it was maintenance beforehand and it get it set all around this has been an absolutely amazing experience before we get into the rest of this video I need to insert clips of our experience last night at round one which was an insane six plus level like adult Chuck E. Cheeses here in Japan. We fully believe that it was rigged and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play the videos here.
I'm not, not leaving empty handed. It's literally impossible. Oh no. He's going to drop. It's set up for me. There's no more coins. We took everything I had. I'm gonna need that cat. <laughs> I think it's too close to the frame now. I don't care. Something for that. It's gonna drop. Good. It's gonna drop. Look the butt. I need to walk away. I'm crying. I need to walk away. It's just so funny. <laughs> Oh, it let it go. Do you see that? 
it opened and before it got here. <gasps> Watch, isn't it open it early? <gasps> you saw it open it early. You see? Oh, I want to go home. <laughs> you saw it open it early, right? Oh, I want to go home. If that opens early, it op. Oh my. We're leaving. So yeah, we um. We left that night after a really long time, completely empty handed. I'm fully convinced that it is rigged. I feel so bad for Adam. I couldn't help but laugh. I was brought to tears from laughing so hard that none of us could win anything. But yeah, that was fun. So before I officially leave Ebisu, I wanted to do one final walk around of the car, say my goodbyes, and give you guys a full damage report post my first ever Matsuri. So starting off at the front of the car, the very first thing that happened was my own fault. I was driving North Course, which is already a pretty gnarly track. It started raining really bad and I just had a little too much sin. So the first damage that actually happened to the car was very anticlimactic, very lame, straight line lockup, straight off track. So that caused all the damage to the actual front bumper. Luckily, Sidex was able to drift stitch this back up, which honestly, I had no hope for it. I don't know how they did this, but they pulled it off. Shout out, thank you to Sidex. They also had to replace a tie rod because I broke a tie rod. So first day of drifting, the only damage was the front bumper by itself and tie rod. That was immediately fixed, back on track. Now, the worst damage happened at Nico Circuit from a train crash. of the train. You got a boost leak. I don't want to look inside. And if it's your fault, you got to clean it up. That's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Oh, man, bro. Do you want to jump on this? I don't know. I'm not a body guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <We got it. laughs> Yeah, it's working. It's good now. Good job. Tell me when it's over. I got some place that I gotta be. It won't leave. My friends say, get out of your comfort zone. It's a blessing in disguise. Now it was Jason leading Samet and myself. Uh, Jason had a little too much send with the backy. Stopped on track. Samet stopped, and I just. I couldn't stop in time before hitting Sammy. There's nothing I could do. And that was definitely the worst damage. Shout out, Jason. Had to put a sticker right there. Keep it re. We'll always remember this moment until I replace the spender, of course. But that accident was kind of gnarly, but honestly, it felt so much harder than the damage ended up looking 
afterwards. So the hood got completely bent up. I had to stomp this back out by jumping on the car. That is also where my front headlight got bashed. The frame in here kind of got crumpled and pushed up. It busted this entire intercooler pipe and couplers. Jason ended up giving me the one off of his car at the track. He put it on and I was actually able to do a few more laps before the end of the day. Once the intercooler pipe was put back on, couplers fixed. Got a few little drift stitches in here to make sure my front fender didn't fly off. I actually did a few more laps and it was fine. That's the crash that I got all of this front fender damage. The hood is pretty gnarly. And then if we come back here, that same crash. jz is from hundreds having like overs for the door is still so wild to me. So I can actually just get that replaced and have it be brand new. But that was what that hit was from. So those are my first couple days driving this car and drifting here in Japan. And now let's make our way to the back of the car. I no longer have a rear bumper. It is probably fixable with some drift stitching. Just the rest of the week was so chaotic, I didn't have time to fix it. And I was heading into my first Matsuri, so there's no point to like freshly fix it. But this little number, the rear bumper and tail light was uh, my own doing on tow day. driving tow day, which is a gnarly, basically, mountain course that is already very, very sketchy and has a lot of corners, so it usually takes a long time to actually memorize the track to fully send it. I do two laps riding along with Adam, and I'm like, yeah, let me do it now. My second lap is when that happened, and I was into the mountain, y'all. But after we ripped the rear bumper off, uh, yeah, I was good to go. The rear of the car didn't sustain any damage, which was awesome. Still didn't have a little alignment check, but I mean, I drove the rest of Mitsuri after this and the car felt great. So I was a little surprised, um, but there's no major damage. It was literally just the rear bumper and I will now need a new tail light. So needless to say, the driver's side of this car has gotten quite abused compared to the passenger side. Like this side almost looks brand new. <laughs> Aside from our door marks from Adam, of course, we have a door mark on that side. And, and more door marks on this side, but nothing too crazy. But that is it. Honestly, for my first whole week of drifting in Japan and making it through a full Mitsuri, if I'm honest, I expected the car to be a lot worse. So I am extremely happy with the car. This girl is literally a tank. Now Mikey Racing already painted me a new front bumper. I'm torn. I'm torn on if I'm gonna do a new rear bumper. Um, luckily, when the car was painted, they did paint underneath the bumper, so that made the car look so much better without the rear bumper at all. But I'm torn. I don't know if I should do like a cool bash bar look and maybe have the gussets be like hearts in the gussets. That could look really awesome. Just because the, the bumper on this car was so low, it took forever to jack the car up because you just didn't have enough leverage. So it took a really long time and tire changes took forever. And realistically, I don't think a rear bumper with how low this one was is gonna ever last at too many of the tracks here. So I'm torn on what to do in the rear. I definitely wanna do something, maybe a different style bumper or a bash bar. I don't know, comment below what you think I should do. Overall, I couldn't be happier with this car. I'm officially a Jay-Z 100 girl. And I hate it. This was like the one platform that I never dabbled in. I never really thought I would dabble in and now I've dabbled and I want to dabble some more now. I need to work on the cars that I already have back in the States probably before I end up getting a Jay-Z X100 over there. But I absolutely love this car and it was pretty key driving with everyone else in the same car. That just made the entire experience so much better. I'm still just mind blown that this is 
basically a stock car. Aside from some angle in the front and a dual caliper with the hydro, like this is pretty much a stock JZX100. One of my absolute favorite things about this car, aside from the performance and it being a tank, is how much stuff you can fit in here. You can fit all of your drift spares and your entire shop practically between the back seat and the trunk. There is so much room. That alone is probably enough motivation to make me want to sell one of my cars and replace it with one of these. That way I can do track days on my own, have spare tires and tools. Usually with my 350Z, I can fit two tires in there. I think one time I got four, but I, it was like basically on me in the passenger seat. So to have the car like this for a drift week or just local track days that you have to drive to the track and get home, this is it. I am honestly going to miss this car so much, but this car is staying right here. We're not bringing this back to the States. Our plan is to come to Matsuri hopefully twice a year. The next one is Spring Matsuri and I really, 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 really am going to prioritize that because I want to be at it so badly. So I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to know like how I found this car, how I bought a car in Japan not being here, and a little bit of the pricing around everything. A few things on that. So I worked with SideX Japan to help coordinate pretty much everything. They're a big shop out here that can help you find the perfect car for you depending on what type of trip you're trying to have. They build drift cars, they run Samet and Fausto in FD over here. They put together Ebisu programs for people and going into next year they're going to be putting together other experiences that they can bring you to different tracks around Japan, not just here at Ebisu. They do it all, and I worked with Fausto to not just find the car, but to make sure that the car was sorted and ready for something as crazy as the past week of drifting that I've done. This car, like I've mentioned, actually belonged to Mikey Racing, so we did work with him to do some of the maintenance since Mikey already had the car at his place. And Mikey also ordered me the brand new Origin Mach 2 body kit and painted it as well. Honestly, I got really, really lucky with this car. The fact that the previous driver of the car was a girl is the main reason why I fit, which is so important. It also has a hydro, which isn't too common um, because it was set up for Mikey's wife. So that worked out absolutely amazingly. I also got lucky because Mikey paints cars at his shop, which is where this car was. This situation was just a little bit different because the previous owner of the car happens to do body and paint work. So I got really lucky because between buying the car and getting a new body kit and paint done, that was like the time frame of a week. All said and done with the new body kit, new paint, uh, maintenance done on the car, any little things fixed that needed to be fixed, I'm probably in this car like 18 grand, which mentally I wasn't really prepared for coming over for this Japan trip. But looking at the market, that is actually a really good deal. I saw some other Ebisu chasers or Mach 2s that were listed for sale for like 15 grand and they were really beat up Ebisu missile cars and they were still going for 15 grand. Obviously, the price of cars is just skyrocketed all over the place, but the yen is down right now compared to where it usually is. So if you are looking to buy a car over here, now is probably the better time because if the yen was stronger, this would have easily probably been like a 20, thousand dollar plus purchase. Now I did go a little above and beyond. I wanted to be fancy with the new body kit and the paint. Aesthetics and how a car looks is a big part of the overall satisfaction that I get from cars. It means a lot to me and it just makes all the experiences that I have with that car so much more fulfilling. It, it's weird, but the, the color and the way the car looked like really, really mattered to me. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm so glad I did that. Obviously the car isn't brand new anymore and it has some battle stars, but I love it. Yeah. We're rushing to leave, so I'm gonna keep driving and talking. So at the track, SideX is here, thankfully, to mount tires for everyone. The cost is pretty similar to what it is in the States. It's around like eight to ten dollars per tire and you don't have to do it yourself and struggle. So that is amazing that they have that support. They're based out of North Course and they'll be there for the foreseeable future. Next month, Surrey, they're setting up an entire lounge there. If you do want additional support from SideX like I was receiving, you just gotta make sure that you reach out to them directly obviously if they're helping you find a car and get it sorted you know they'll they'll be there for you at the track as well i would definitely recommend reaching out to sidex cost of tires was similar to what it is in the states the 10 dozen i was 
running most of the time. I was running 235 Kendas and they lasted forever. Cost was about $80 a tire, so not that bad. I did a few laps on the 265 Lean Longs here and I think those were significantly cheaper. I haven't gotten that bill officially yet, but I'm pretty sure those came in around 50. And total, the entire time I've been driving for almost a week, I think I only went through like, mm, 10 sets of tires, which is kind of crazy. They do have a gas station that's right outside Ebisu that's easy to get to. It's just slightly more expensive. So every time I filled up Hayaku Monten, Kurasai, <laughs> Akumontan that ended up being about a hundred dollars every single time so that's kind of typical though for having fuel available at a track it's gonna be more expensive overall costs were pretty similar to what they are in the US if anything just slightly cheaper because the US dollar is currently stronger than the yen so if I were to have come out here like four years ago when the yen was a lot stronger this entire trip would have been a lot more expensive the same with going out to eat like Jason Danny me and Adam would go out and order so much food every night and it ended up being so much cheaper than it was in the US purely because of the US dollar to the yen. Hotels are not expensive out here either. We're talking like 150 ish a night. If the yen does get stronger, that will obviously change. Those are like the main price questions that I got. I'm parked in my car right now. I'm gonna say my goodbyes and it's gonna head over to the side at shop. I've had such an absolutely amazing experience here. I can't I cannot wait to come back. I'm I'm so stoked on this entire trip. I'm so grateful that I got to experience my first ever Mitsuri and that it was just such a good experience. I didn't have any car problems really. This has been an absolute dream of mine and I'm really excited that I was able to bring all of you guys along for the journeys. Japan vlogs do not stop yet. We're currently about to get on the road towards Tokyo and we have a lot more adventures coming up. That is it for this video and I will see you guys in the next one.